This is blasphemy. This is madness. Madness. This is Sparta! Assassin's Creed Odyssey breaks the traditional mold of Ubisoft's long-running action franchise. The game was wildly successful back in 2018, but is it still worth playing today? In this video, I'll be reviewing Assassin's Creed Odyssey from the perspective of a newcomer to the franchise. I'll be taking a look at the game's combat, exploration, quests, XP progression and microtransaction controversy, along with other systems in the game. This video will be spoiler free, aside from some basic story setup and side quests. Keep watching to see it all. What's up everyone, Big Dan here. I make videos about RPGs like Fallout, Mass Effect, and Dragon Age. I explore hidden scenes, rare choices, lore videos, guides, and reviews like this one. So hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss any new videos. Without further ado, let's dive right in. Like it or not, Assassin's Creed is an open-world RPG franchise now. For many OG AC fans, the new games like Odyssey are heretical trash that don't deserve to carry the name Assassin's Creed. But for a gamer like me, a filthy casual who loves Skyrim, The Witcher 3, and the Mass Effect trilogy, Assassin's Creed Odyssey is honestly right up my alley. Drop me into a beautiful open world with lots of stuff to do, and I'm good to go. The setting of ancient Greece is an excellent place for an open world game of this scope. Greece has fallen far since ancient times. Long gone are the days of Socrates and Pericles. Today the most famous Greeks are Ariana Huffington and Giannis Papas. I love being Greek. I started playing this game with the expectation that it was just a basic bitch open world action game. But I was pleasantly surprised with the amount of role playing options and story choices available to the player. Hell, this game has more meaningful choices than Cyberpunk 2077. It's wild that Ubisoft took more inspiration from The Witcher 3 when developing Odyssey than CD Projekt Red did when they made Cyberpunk. The choices you make in the main story can come back to haunt you or help you in surprising and unexpected ways. There's a sort of butterfly effect where earlier choices will impact the options you have later in the story, which can have even further effects on the ending of the game. In this sense, Odyssey does deserve the moniker of RPG. But what about other role-playing elements like dialogue and the main character? At the beginning of the game, you choose to play as either Alexios or Cassandra, two siblings from a noble Spartan family, descendants from the royal bloodline of King Leonidas. At an early age, you were cast out of Sparta and grew up as an orphan on Kefalonia, a hotbed of poverty and crime. I can't change the past. I never asked for this. With the help of a magnanimous grifter named Marcos, you got back on your feet and grew up to be a mercenary or mystios. This role gives you plenty of opportunity to play both sides of the war between Athens and Sparta. From a role-playing standpoint, you can remain a proud Spartan, looking to reclaim her place in society, or become a resentful Mystios, who forsakes Sparta and works with Athens primarily. Or you could just be in it for the money, or for the love of helping people as a more compassionate Mystios. I really enjoyed stepping into the shoes of Cassandra and shaping this character with dialogue and story choices. But enough about that, we gotta address the elephant in the room. XP Boosters. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is a slow XP grind designed to goad you into purchasing microtransactions from the Ubisoft store to speed your progression through the game. At least, that seems to be the dominant narrative about Odyssey, but how true is it? There is some truth to this narrative, but don't let that scare you away from playing Odyssey entirely. There is definitely some grinding in this game, but it's not as bad as you may have heard and you definitely don't need to purchase any XP boosters to enjoy the game. Here's a quick overview of the XP progression problem in AC Odyssey. Every quest in the game has a recommended level attached to it, so if a quest is marked for level 15, then most of the enemies you encounter in that quest will be around level 15 as well. Makes sense so far, but here's where the problem comes in. Every time you level up, your damage and health increases. You also gain access to higher level weapons, which deal more damage per second. So your ability to deal damage and vanquish enemies is inextricably linked to your character's level. Now if you're one to two levels below the content you're playing, it's not a huge deal. You can still win in combat. But once you start falling three or more levels below the content, combat becomes a tedious grind. 
Even if you can avoid getting killed by your enemies, your weapons will be like useless butter knives against them, and each enemy will take like 50 hits to kill. It's just not fun at that point. Now, if you're only completing main story missions, then you won't level up fast enough to keep pace with the recommended level for later missions. In the 40 hours it took me to complete the main story, I counted three separate occasions where I needed to step away from the main quest and complete side content in order to level up Cassandra. The game even gives you a notification before returning to Sparta that basically tells you to f**k off and go do side quests for a while. Leveling up on the islands? If you feel like you need to level up before doing the next quest, visit nearby islands. They are full of treasures, experience, and great stories to discover. Well, me. I wanted to go to Malacca Sparta. Malacca. While the pacing of the main story does suffer because of this game design choice, I want to emphasize that at no point did I feel it was necessary to purchase an XP booster to enjoy Assassin's Creed Odyssey. There are some phenomenal side quests in this game, which I'll touch on shortly. The question you need to ask yourself if you're thinking about playing this game is, do I want to play the side quests? Because if you're playing through the side content, you'll have no problem leveling up enough to complete the main story without buying any Helix credits. So keep your real world money and play through the Lost Tales of Greece instead. It's well worth the experience. If you enjoy open world RPGs or action games, then Assassin's Creed Odyssey is definitely worth a look. Now let's dive into the nitty gritty details of the gameplay itself, starting with the quests and writing. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is a game with phenomenal side quests and writing. You killed his mother and fucked his pater. Hardcore AC lore buffs will disagree with me on the writing point, but when I say this game has great writing, I'm not referring to the lore, but the dialogue and the characters. Odyssey has a really hilarious and lighthearted tone, which may not be for everyone, but I found it really enjoyable. Ah! By the power of the gods, halt! Good timing! The Minotaur-related quests on Pefka are a great example of this. The island is filled with hilarious grifters trying to separate you from your money. In one part, you're tasked with completing three separate trials to get a chance to face the Minotaur. And one trial is called the Pre-Trial of Accuracy. So I'm thinking, oh, this must be an archery challenge. The guy is even standing on an archery range littered with arrows, but when you talk to him, he says you have to do this. This must be the pre-trial of accuracy. Hmm? Oh, yes. This is the pre-trial of accurately finding my Malacca sons. Your sons? This doesn't sound like a trial. Have you tried raising sons? It's perhaps the greatest trial of all. Only by completing the world famous and totally legitimate pre-trial of accurately finding my sons can you proceed and face the Minotaur. Odyssey has some of the most enjoyable and interesting side quests I've played in a long time, especially the quest chains with Socrates and Ikebiides. It is crucial this package gets to its proper recipient. This is for you. Give it here. Is this some kind of joke? This is a cast of someone's dick. What's this engraving? This is for your wife, Thalia, for when she starts to miss me. So the game has enjoyable quests, but what about the combat? If I'm being honest, this game has mediocre combat at best. When you hit an enemy with a melee attack, it just feels unsatisfying. Like, the hits just aren't impactful, especially when compared to Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which has much more visceral and satisfying combat. For the bulk of the game, you'll be engaged in melee combat, but you can use a bow as well, However, bows don't do very much damage unless you're using hunter abilities, which are at their best if you're stationary. You can also take a stealth approach in some scenarios, hiding in tall grass or on rooftops, taking out your enemies silently. However, many enemies can't be killed in one hit unless you spec heavily into the critical assassination ability, which can be used at the cost of adrenaline. Speaking of abilities, these are the best part of Odyssey's combat in my opinion. As you land hits in combat, you will build up adrenaline which can be used to activate different abilities. There are three different ability trees, Hunter, Warrior, and Assassin, basically Archery, Melee, and Stealth. My favorite abilities were Ring of Chaos, where Cassandra channels energy through the Spear of Leonidas into a big AoE blast, and of course the Sparta Kick. Overall, the combat in AC Odyssey is serviceable but far from great. This is a complete tangent, but some of the NPCs are hilariously brain dead. Sometimes they'll just stand so close to a brazier that they just catch on fire. Oh. 
Also, any NPC on horseback will completely disregard and recklessly plow over NPCs who are walking. It's hilarious watching them dive out of the way or just getting hit. I decided to get in on this action myself when I got to Sparta. <laughs> Assassin's Creed Odyssey is a game with lots of tedious inventory management. As I mentioned earlier, your weapons and armor are tied to a particular level. Meaning that as you level up, your old gear will become useless and you'll need to swap it out for higher level equipment with better stats. This means you'll spend a lot of time on this menu page, changing out individual pieces of gear, and dismantling old weapons and armor for crafting materials. Now you can go to a blacksmith and upgrade older items to a higher level. So if you find a particular weapon that you like, you can continue to upgrade it so it will still be useful. However, the cost to upgrade items increases with each level, so it's impractical to constantly upgrade your entire loadout. I recommend focusing on one to two pieces of gear and swapping out the rest. You can reduce the upgrade cost by climbing the mercenary tier list, which I'll touch on in a moment. It's also worth pointing out that many of the same crafting materials are needed to upgrade your ship, which is necessary to survive some of the naval battles that take place in the main story or regular sea exploration. In my case, I only focused on upgrading my favorite sword, which I use for the vast majority of the game. I know Assassin's Creed Valhalla got a lot of criticism for only having a handful of weapon and armor pieces that you would upgrade throughout the game, but I honestly preferred that system to sorting through inventory menus every single time I leveled up my character. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is a game where you could be an absolute criminal scum. Stop right there, criminal scum! But the Greeks enforced the law through a bounty system rather than guards and soldiers. As you commit various criminal acts, you'll build up a bounty meter. When the meter increases past a certain point, mercenaries will start hunting you down and try to kill you to collect the bounty. And if you have a really large bounty, multiple mercenaries will all come after you simultaneously. There are basically three ways to get rid of a bounty. Pay it off, wait until it goes away, or kill the bounty sponsor. For particularly large bounties, I would typically pursue the third option, as it was the quickest and cheapest way to get the bounty hunters off my back. When bounty hunters track you down, it can be a real pain in the ass because they will often be a higher level than you and the fights can be brutal. You can avoid them, but it can get pretty stressful since they seem to be able to narrow down your location with pinpoint accuracy. As you defeat mercenaries, you will also climb a mercenary tier list, which gives you access to better prices and rewards. This can help greatly reduce the cost of upgrading gear and ship components. Side note, I love how higher level mercenaries will roast you when they see you, saying things like, You call yourself a Mystios? To be a while before you are <laughs> Assassin's Creed Odyssey is a game with a dash of naval combat and exploration. I really didn't like the naval combat at first, but it eventually grew on me. The process is pretty simple. Ram your ship into the enemy, pepper them with arrows and javelins, rinse and repeat until you can board the ship and wipe out their soldiers. I love how Cassandra would rally the troops together right before a boarding. It's also really satisfying to Sparta kick enemies off their ship into the water. When you sink an enemy vessel, it restores your ship's health, allowing you to get back into the action and fight other nearby ships that may be drawn into the battle. For the most part, ships you encounter on the high seas won't attack you on sight unless they are pirates or if you ram right into them. It's worth getting the hang of naval combat because you'll have to do it during several parts of the main story and when tracking down cultists from the gods of the Aegean Sea. As for naval exploration, it isn't particularly exciting. Aside from coming across a random shipwreck or naval battle, you'll mostly just sail in a straight line from point A to point B until you reach your next land destination. Assassin's Creed Odyssey gives you a big, beautiful game world to explore. I was really impressed with the environments and the attention to detail on some of the buildings, such as the temples. Aside from the cities, I really enjoyed exploring ancient tombs, which have some light environmental puzzles, and reward you with an extra ability point at the end. I also enjoyed searching for clues and hunting down members of the Cult of Cosmos, your primary enemy in the game. The Isu sites you discover throughout the story were also a sight to behold. And not to spoil anything, but there is a phenomenal mythological storyline in Odyssey that you have to experience for yourself. All in all, I have to give Ubisoft mad props for the world they created in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. 
I just wanted to spend as much time as I could exploring this world and soaking in all the beauty and details. Speaking of beauty, what about romance? Assassin's Creed Odyssey is a game where you can bang pretty much everybody. You can even bang a chick with an eye patch. I love being Greek. Going back through my footage, I counted seven different trysts that Cassandra experienced in my playthrough. And there were definitely a bunch more that I missed out on. You can start that after we have a little fun. You're joking, right? You just told me this whole thing is my fault. The last thing I want to do is sleep with you. Thought I'd try. Alas, given Cassandra's life situation and the openness of ancient Greek romance, none of these encounters are more than flings. So if you're looking for a longer term love, you won't find it here. Overall, I really, really enjoyed Assassin's Creed Odyssey. It's definitely still worth playing if you're into epic open world RPGs. The pros in Odyssey far outweigh the cons in my opinion. Despite the sometimes annoying XP, grind, and janky combat, there is a great experience filled with excellent quests, phenomenal characters, and a beautiful world to explore. Assassin's Creed Odyssey gets the Big Dan stamp of approval. So there you have it. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is still worth playing this year and beyond. If you liked this video, be sure to subscribe to Big Dan Gaming for more Mass Effect and RPG videos. I also have a bunch more reviews and RPG videos, so why don't you check out another one, like this one I've linked on the screen. Shout out to all the channel members for supporting my content. Until next time, this has been Big Dan. I should go.